Hey YouTube, how you guys doing tonight? Kevin here coming at you with another video. So, grab your 10mm wands, open up your manual to horsepower, baby, yeah! Alright, so tonight we're going to be discussing, discussing, yeah, that's the word, discussing horsey power and pony power, if you will. So I got a whole bunch of stuff right here to show you guys, everything from a chainsaw two-stroke, a KE two-stroke, and a standard RM250, and an extreme RM250, okay? And we're going to get into all kinds of stuff tonight, a little bit of an open discussion on horsey power, pony power, and all that type of stuff. So, I'm going to get you guys in the stand, but before I do, if you guys like videos like this, please hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so when I post a video, you guys get it. All right, let me get you guys in the stand. Let's get crack a lacking. This is probably going to be a, uh, a two to three part series um, on this discussion because there is a lot to get into. And I'm going to talk to you guys a lot about where power is made, horsepower is made, okay? And, um, well, let's just get right into it, okay? So, the KE100, which is the primary bike that we do on the channel, this is a cylinder right here from that, okay? Just the regular standard bore, 50, uh, 49 and a half millimeters across. In fact, here's a piston from one right here. And you can see if it's right in there. And this piston right here is from a 250. So you can really see the size difference. Okay? They are literally double. And this is bored out 80 over. But we're not going to get into that just yet. Okay? So now you can see the two pistons side by side from a 250cc to a 100cc. Okay? Now, horsepower. Where is it made? How is it generated in these two-stroke bikes? Now, the first thing you have to understand is with a two-stroke bike, you're able to make power in a smaller package. All right? So if this was, if this 250 right here was a four-stroke, it would have a huge head on it with two valves in it. On some bikes, it would be four valves. But it would have to be a lot bigger than this. Okay? The whole engine itself would be heavier and bigger. With a two-stroke, we're able to achieve high horsepower and high torque at a low weight package. So the engines are a lot smaller on a two-stroke than they are on a four. What does this do for the bike? So a two-stroke versus a four-stroke. One, it's lighter. Two, there are less moving parts to fail and get in the way of high RPM. So on an engine that had valve springs on the top of the piston and the valves will be opening as the piston's going up and down, what would happen is, at high RPMs, they call them valve float. So instead of the cam opening and closing them nicely, the cam is spinning so fast it's actually kicking the valves, okay? This causes a lot of top end wear and you're always adjusting your rocker arms, okay? Because of the high RPM. So, you don't have that in a two stroke. Two strokes are more efficient that way. They can reach higher RPMs than a four stroke without any engine interference. Now, there are pros and cons to all of these, okay? A four stroke typically is easier to work on. A, um, a two stroke is harder to understand for most people because it's easier to associate a four stroke with, their, like say, their car that they're driving. All right, so let's get into this. All right, we're going to talk about power. Where is the power made? Real simple. The power on any... So, if you had a car, a truck, or any type of high-performance vehicle, if you go on any of the forums and you, or the uh, YouTube channels and you're looking at engine builders, one of the things you'll notice on every single build is that they're putting an intake manifold on. It might be an Edelbrock or a Holly intake or a Wieland or an Offenhauser. Okay? And... The reason why they're changing the intake is because it has bigger runners. Now, let's talk about runners for a minute. Okay, so, on, a, on a, a V8 car engine, you have your carburetor right here. Okay, and then the intake has runners that go down 
to each cylinder. These are where your intake is. Okay, so I've got my drawing. Here we go. All right, and these right here bolt up to your your cylinder head and your intake valves. Now, what they do on performance vehicles or performance engines, they put intakes. This is the carburetor right here, carb. All right, and they put engines, they put intakes on there with much bigger runners. And they get more horsepower and torque out of it. And here is why. Because on these um, smaller runners, you can only put so much cubic inches of air and fuel into one runner. Okay. On a bigger intake, now you could put in much more. So when that intake valve opens, it's going to get more air and more fuel into that cylinder for the next combustion cycle. Same thing is true with a two-stroke. The bigger the intake runner, the more air and fuel charge you can get into the cylinder. But here's a problem. The carburetor is bolted directly to your cylinder or on a rotary valve is bolted right to the, um, what do you call it there, the rotary housing. So, Kevin, that's all well and fine, but that's how big my intake runner is. Do I get a bigger intake? No. I'm going to show you. On a car engine, you have the intake runners. On a four-stroke engine, you have an intake right here. Here's your intake right here, or you can swap it out for something bigger that can handle more air and fuel. Okay, so when that intake valve opens up, which is right here, when the intake valve opens up, it's going to suck in this charge of air right here, where this one is only going to get that little bit. You follow what I'm saying? So this right here can induce more air and fuel through the valve than this one can. And that's going to create, with this intake right here, more power. Okay. On a two-stroke, you can't do that. All right? You don't have a big intake. And even if you did, it ain't going to help. And I'm going to show you guys why. I'm going to show you what you guys can do to get more power out of your bike. So, your intake runners are not right here. That's your intake. That's where the carb mounts. But that's not your intake. Your intake are these transfer ports right here, okay? So instead of being external, like on that two down in that four stroke there with the big intake, this intake runner right here is not external like this one. It's internal, and it's right here, okay? So I'm going to show you guys something. This cylinder right here is for a 100 cc this cylinder which is bigger not by much this is a ke 100 going into a 55 rancher okay and you can see it fits in there pretty well i'll show you this do you see the shape of these intake runners see how fat and big they are Okay, see them on both sides right there? Okay, those are your intake runners. This is what allows these engines to make so much power. So I'm going to show you guys the one on the 250. You're going to be like, what? <laughs> Look at the size of these 250 runners. I could stick my fingers in there. I could put my thumb, okay, into these runners. These runners are so big that when that charge of air and fuel is induced okay it's a significant amount that is where horsepower and torque is made now a person said to me kevin my little kx60 can beat my ke100 in a race off the line up a hill and all that and it's because 
the runners on the 250 look like this. But there's another thing here with these bikes, okay? The stroke, which is how far the piston travels down. On a KE100, it has a narrow piston. It's long, it's skinny, and it has a deep stroke, all right? On a KX100, the piston is quite a bit bigger, but has a shorter stroke. Okay, so how is it a 100? Well, I'm going to show you with my piece of paper. Okay, so I'm doing this in layman's terms so you guys can understand it. There's a lot of technical parts to this, but I'm, I'm giving you guys the basics so you guys can basically understand it. And then as we go, we'll get more in, in depth in it. Okay, so a KX100 has a wider piston but a shorter stroke. Let me see if you guys can see what I'm doing here. All right, so it's got a wider piston. You guys see that right? Wider piston, shorter stroke. The KE, this is a KX. KX 100. The KE has a narrower piston but has a longer stroke. All right, so you can see here, the KX has a wider piston, but a shorter stroke. The KE has a um, narrower piston and a longer stroke, but the volume inside the cylinder so the space in here, the volume, from the top right here, when the piston is all the way down, is the same. So that is how a KE and a KX have the same volume, making them 100 cc's. Now here's the thing. Remember I was telling you about the shorter stroke? The shorter stroke allows the KX to rev a lot faster. If it can rev a lot faster, it can push the fuel and air charge through the runners a lot faster and gets that fuel charge from the crankcase through the transfer ports and on top of the piston for combustion. Now, I wish I had a KX100, I would show you the runners, but see how small these are? They're pretty small. They're very small. All right. The KX100 is beefed up like this. Has big, huge runners. Okay. So now you have a shorter stroke, a wider piston. It's going to push that fuel up on top. It's going to get up there really quick. The faster you get that up to the top of the cylinder, the faster you can you can make a combustion. All that equals horsepower, okay? Now there's another thing. Now we're gonna talk about another thing that allows these bikes to rev so high. So we have talked about flywheels on the channel before and their significance. These right here are what allows the, the ignition timing, the charging system, and everything. But this is pretty heavy. This this. 11 horsepower engine has to turn this thing as well as move the bike. When you start spinning this, this thing has got some weight to it. What happens is this flywheel actually causes the bike to lose power, all right, because of its weight. And the fact that it has to try to spin this big mass of weight at such a high RPM. Now our electronics on these bikes sit underneath the flywheel here so it's got the magnetic pole on the inside kind of like a brake this thing spins at such a high speed and it's heavy so once again it's robbing you of power but you can't just go put a lighter flywheel on your bike that's not designed for it because then your ignition timing will be off and the balance will be off so a high performance engine 
such as this is balanced internally and has a different style flywheel. I want to show you guys what that flywheel looks like. It looks like this. This is how small it is. You can see the weights, like the, you know, the magnets on the outside, okay? This, instead of having the electronics on the inside, they're actually external, and I'll show you what they look like. And it's the same thing like on the uh, on the performance bikes, okay? And this is what it looks like. This thing rotates on the inside, and you can see how small it is. All right, the, oh, the electronics are, like I said, on the outside of it, and the magnets, you know, this rotates and spins inside there for the magnets to, you know, get the charge coil and the ignition going. All right, so this is a performance-style ignition. The weight of this is lightweight, so it allows the engine to rev a lot higher keeping its horsepower at max. All right, so now we're gonna get in and I'm gonna show you guys a couple of cool things. So back in the day, they had old school races, okay? Where guys would, you know, a lot of guys did their own machine work, to be honest with you. They had bridge ports and boring machines and stuff like that for small engines, okay? So this guy right here, who had, well this is from the, not from the same, but it's the same bike, but it's slightly different, okay? A couple of years difference. This and this are both from the same style bike, okay? Both are from a uh, 250, RM250, just different years, okay? This one's, they're both aluminum and everything else, but I wanna show you guys something. This cylinder head used to look like this. It's the exact same head. It will bolt on. You can see the spark plugs in the same spot. But what they had to do is they trim down some of these fins. Why? Because the exhaust, the big expansion chamber, came right there. Where this head had already had plenty of clearance. That chamber was so big that they actually had to shave the head down. And when they did that, they also made like this inner one here is for clearance for the spark plug, okay? Because they ran two spark plugs. Now, the purpose for that would be if one follows, you move it over to the other one, but they also had a race mode versus a standard stock, okay? Now, the engine that was in this, it had burnt up. You can see some of the debris on the debris field. This is an open chamber, okay? So see right here, this is actually a low compression head, and you could burn regular fuel on this. Okay, nothing fancy. But what they did to this thing was crazy. So they took this 250 cylinder. Let me get the head off. They bored it out. You can see how big this cylinder is. You can see the, the transfer of ports in there. Look how big they is. Look how big those ports are. Yeah, see that? Look how crazy, how big those are, and how many they are. All right. So, this part that sticks up is actually a sleeve. Now, if you look at this one, there's no sleeve. This is what it looked like original. Okay. This is what the cylinder looked like original. All right. This right here is after the machine work. You can see how it sticks up. And it's got a basic gasket on the outside, okay? And you look underneath, and you can see how it is. It just came through, and it is a quite a monstrous cylinder sleeve. Now, they had to do something else because see how that sticks up? They had to take that cylinder head, and they had to grind it out. They had to machine it out. So that this cylinder fits on top of that protrusion right there. And you can see how they modified it for a second spark plug and then cut the end of it off so it, it literally, it just arcs. There's no gap, it arcs. That's it. And they did that. Now when they cut this back, it's still an open chamber, but it's a lot smaller. 
another performance thing that they used to do. That's how they got a lot of power. On these bikes, they were able to use a, a very large, um, what do you call it, their carburetor. Now, there's two different intake styles, okay, and this bike right here had both of them. You can see how it's got the three bolt pattern, rubber boot, and then the carburetor sits onto it. And then there was the other style, the other, the newer style, which has the piece right on it, it had a, a regular boot that goes over it, and then the carburetor. So, this is the one that they use um, for performance. And, and the reason why is because they could port out the inside, bolt this flange to it, and, you, and run a really big carburetor. And then they punched it out to 80 thousandths over. And underneath you see the stamp, the W for the Wise Co. So that's quite the uh, that's quite the piston. This is old. This is uh, 1976. There's a couple of different uh, versions of this motor. This is the 250 uh, RM Suzuki. But I wanted to show you guys some comparisons on where that power is generated, where it's made from, and a lot of it is right in the cylinders itself now a lot of people ask me kevin how can i get more horsepower out of my ke 100 or my kd80 or my km 100 and i tell them the same thing this right here this area you can port this and open this up okay see this wall how fat this wall is you can thin this wall up a little bit. You don't want to grind it out, but you can thin it up and make this a little... You can take your gasket. What a lot of people do is they take their gasket, they set their gasket on here, and then they trace the edges of the gasket. It'll be like, you know, wherever the gasket lies. And then what they'll do is they'll grind that out. And that's how they poured it. I'm going to be doing videos on that because I want to show you guys how you can get a lot more power out of these out of these cylinders. The problem with them, and you can see right through the light, see the light there? They don't have this shape ability. This is where the power comes up. It comes up and flows in, okay? This one right here basically goes up and at a 90, and that is very hard to do. So... When you have something that's more subtle like this, and it kind of curves in, it kind of flows in, that's going to give you more power. This one right here goes up, 90, boom, done. Okay, and that's that's not good. So, um, there is a lot of meat. If you guys can see that. Now. There's a lot of meat that can be um, trimmed back to really open up these ports and give you more power. So we're going to be doing videos on porting a, a two-stroke cylinder to get more horsepower out of it. Um, you can literally gain three to five horsepower right from doing that modification, if not more. Um, it's not a whole lot of complex, but you have to know what you're doing. Because if you do it wrong, you can actually rob yourself of power. So I'm going to show you guys how to do that properly on this channel. So we're going to be getting into some tech stuff. You know techie type stuff and try to get a little bit more power out of a ke 100 um because you can get more power out of them it's just not a uh what you call it there it's going to take you a little bit of work i also wanted to show you guys a little something else another place where horsepower and torque is made is in the exhaust on a two-stroke engine Without a good exhaust, a tuned exhaust, the bike is not going to have the power. I mean, let's just face it. This is what, this is the creme de la creme where the power is made, okay? And this is called the expansion chamber, all right? Now, there's a lot of science to these, how they work, and I can't really explain it in this video because it's going to, it's going to make this video way too long, but we are going to get into the technology behind this. Okay, and how it comes up and compresses and, and comes back, um, and the sound, the ultrasonic, you know, the the sonic. I call it sonic. I, I'm going to get into all that, but it's all in the shape of the way this is made. And when you take a performance exhaust, okay, 
kind of like this one right here versus a factory one all right there is a lot of difference and as a factory one these RKEs have to meet federal standards for emissions noise pollution and all that any aftermarket exhaust or any performance off-road bike is going to have more off-road capabilities more power because it doesn't have to meet the emission standard okay or the quietness all right so there's there's that and also too you'll notice how this comes into a cone and goes into a smaller pipe i see a lot of people take these off and try to put a bigger pipe that is what is that is one of the most common things I see with exhaust modifications and it's wrong. You want a smaller pipe up there. You want that restriction. You need that restriction. When you put a big giant pipe on here, you're going to you're going to ruin your bike. All right, you're going to ruin the power. So you want a nice big fat hefty ex expansion chamber and you want a thin pipe coming out the top. That's where you're going to get your power from. That's where you get your sound and your power from. This exhaust right here is off of a Suzuki TC90. Okay, and you'll notice that it has a lot of the same characteristics as a KE100. This exhaust will mount up to a KE100 motor or a, um, yeah, a KE100 motor. And the exhaust mounts are just a slight bit off and it's got a really nice tip on it. Now, you'll see how fat this tip is. Now, you're probably saying, Kevin, that's contradicting. No. Inside here, it actually has a reducer. It comes in, they call it a spark arrestor on these, okay? And right inside here, it comes into a small, a small pipe like that one. So it looks big out here, and this is what people see. So the first thing they do is take the tip off, and now they got this big exhaust. Oh, yeah! Now yeah, the bike didn't really run as well as it did before. Must be because of the noise reduction. No, it's because of the tip, the insert that's in here, the baffle. That's what reduces the size. So it's not really this size. It's smaller on the inside. This is from a different bike, but you get the idea. So see how it's got the big pipe on it? Just like this. Right here, it's about the same size. You can actually see how it, how it gets reduced into that small that small diameter I was telling you about. So that's a big big thing. Okay. So, do they make an expansion chamber for a KE100? Yes. Now this is what it looks like. This is an oldie. Hooker Headers makes one, but this one is actually um, I forgot who makes it. It's Kawas it's said Kawasaki Torque something you can look at the other the early video on this and i got the other one of these that goes here um that's the heat the heat guard and the exhaust baffle looks a little different but there's packing in there okay and uh it is reduced in the middle and this is what the expansion chamber looks like and you can see how it's got the cone right here to, con to compress and goes through just a long tube and this and this exhaust pipe right here is literally designed for a KE 100 okay this one will bolt right onto a KE there's a clamp that goes around it uh, and this is an aftermarket exhaust system for it factory made not by Kawasaki but by the company who makes these exhausts now they don't this company is out of business and this right here was on a um, a friend of mine's forum uh, GTZ garages you could check them out and uh, I talked to Todd over there, real great guy. He had this on his um, page, and um, I says, how much? He gave me a price. I couldn't pass it up. I had to have it. So this is going to be cleaned up a little bit more, and this is going to be going on the KE-102 build because this is super cool, and I'm going to get more power out of this. And I'll show you what it looks like compared to the actual factory um, KE-100 exhaust. And here are the two side by side. You guys can see how it, how it's got the same angles and all that. And they literally are the same. Just that this one right here has a clamp that goes around the outer part. And it's like, see this one right here? It's not used. There's not nothing there. So it just grabs it from the front and by the back. 
and this exhaust system is significantly lighter than that one um, by a lot <laughs> so this is going to be an improvement now I did do a video on modifying one of these and you can see, I actually see the rivets here if you look at my exhaust systems that I've made um, this one right here has got the rivets because right here on the inside there are two baffles two big walls that the um, exhaust you know hits okay and they are flat so what happens is the reason these are very inefficient by the way because the exhaust comes up and expands right here hits a wall and then comes up with all kinds of turbulence and it doesn't compress until it gets back here and by then it's gone okay because it has to go through the baffle holes and all that there's a lot of power loss right here all right this exhaust is more for uh, noise reduction and the lack of power where if you look at this one here it's got a sm the exhaust gases can expand right here collect recompress and kind of go back a little bit and hold back the exhaust see on a two-stroke engine I'll show you guys real quick for a brief second if you look straight across I'm gonna put my finger in there so you can see what I'm talking about see right here that is your intake get the light see the intake right there okay for a brief moment the intake and the exhaust are opened at the exact same time so some of the unburnt fuel charge escapes through the exhaust that's why an expansion chamber is so much it gives you so much more power because it kind of holds that back in there so that the um the shock wave some people call it a shock wave some people call it like a sonic you know vibe you know kickback there's all kinds of terminologies for it when that holds it back it keeps the fuel and air charge in here and compresses and then detonates okay for that microsecond this exhaust right here will give you a lot more power than say a factory one because while that's all happening this one's compressing this one's hitting a wall so automatically right off the bat you're going to gain more power okay more torque so and of course with this right here you're going to have to rejet because of the different way the exhaust is escaping so although they have both baffled this one right here is, um, what do you call it? It's got packing in it. Okay, this one right here has packing in the back. And the whole, on the sidewalls on the inside is a mesh, a screen, with packing on the sidewalls of these. And these exhaust systems can get very, very heavy. And what makes them heavy is the oily soot gets into all the packing and really just weighs this thing down. And it's a really terrible exhaust system. For any two-stroke it's great for noise reduction but other than that you're leaving a lot of a lot of horsepower and torque on the table with the factory exhaust so if you have a chance to get a or find an exhaust system such as this you're gonna be able to make more power with it you know it's got one little dent right here and it's not enough to even worry about so I'm not but we're gonna get into more um, technical parts of the exhaust tonight's just kind of a fundamental thing talking to you guys about horsepower and where it's made on your bikes okay and this is where it's made so um, anyway guys I'm gonna end the video right here I just want to say thank you guys for watching thank you to all my new subscribers and um, you guys have been absolutely awesome and we're gonna take a lot of these um, modifications if you will and we're going to put them into practice on here. We're going to do these on, on the KEs. We're going to do them on some of the other bikes. And uh, see what we can get performance-wise out of them. And a lot of people confuse performance and, like, engine builds, okay? Like, like high performance. There is a difference. Performance in itself means whatever you have making it work a little better. When you have a high performance... Now you're taking the parts that are making it better and you're creating more power with it. This is a high performance, okay? This is going to make you more power, more torque, 
um, the modified cylinder is going to give you more power as well. And like I said, it's it it's one of those things you're going to have to learn how to do. But I'm going to teach you. So thank you guys again for watching. If you guys have any comments, any questions, by all means, feel free to ask me on the live chat, which we do on Tuesdays, Two Stroke Tuesdays. And um, I look forward to talking with you guys. If you guys have any comments or any questions, by all means, uh, please ask them. Comment below. And if you're thinking it, someone else is. So this is we're going to be getting into the KE100, uh, KE102 pretty soon. Um, I just got to have one part welded. And uh, it came out pretty nice. I'm very, very happy with the way it came out. So, yeah, we're going to just keep going. And we got, uh, well, let me show you guys what's going on. I'm in the process right now, just a little add-on in the video. Um, got the heater going right now. I have Elvin's bike on the lift. All right, we still have to split the case on the Suzuki, but we got a snowstorm, so I had to bring in this bike from out back because I can't leave that under a top opened up. So this bike had to come in here, so I had to put Elvin's on the on the uh, lift. And we're going to separate the uh, case on the um the ke table so i gotta clean this all off which i'll do after not not tonight but on another video and we're just kind of moving things around so i put the the shelf up there and i gotta just basically do a a good cleaning in here which is what i'm working on and i got my my little heater going right there which is nice i got an exhaust that was out in the snow um that was given to me so that right there is going to uh, be melting and um, just kind of going through and putting stuff together because we have a lot of projects to do, guys. It's crazy. So, Alvin's bike's on the chopping block now. And we got the uh, Dave's bike. We're going to be doing that on this bench right here. So, tomorrow, the next video, you'll see this will be all cleaned off. And then Dave's bike motor will be up there because we have all his parts in that. So, and I moved my bolt bins out here too. A couple bolt bins on the, the blue and the green. So, yeah, we got a lot of we got a lot of cool stuff. So, um, yeah, we're going to be getting on Alvin's bike. We're going to dust it off, get it up there, and um, take a look and see what's going on with his bike. He said no spark. He hasn't heard it run. Um, he did take apart the front wheel, but we're going to have to uh, put that correctly. It's on, it's on backwards right now. Um, so we did that. So we went up to Harvey Spooners, as you saw. So I got rid of that stack of tires and made room for more tires and wheels right over there. Pizza boxes, guys. Pizza boxes. Save your pizza boxes. Those are going to come in handy. We're going to use one on Dave's bike. So, we got Alvin's bike up here on the chopping block. And we're going to do a comparison. We're going to find out what's going on with this bike. And get this thing up and running for him. So, this is a cool bike. KE125. So, and I'm going to show you guys how to take out dents like that. Using an inner tube. Oh, I already gave it away, huh? Yep, I'm going to show you guys how to do that. So that dent right there can easily be taken out with an inner tube. So, nothing bad. He's got, um, you can't take out these little ones, but we're going to see if we can get the big one going and see what we can do for him on that. So, should be fun. Anyway, guys. Well, thank you guys for watching. Thank you for subscribing. And I will talk to you guys later. I'm out!